Well, good evening, everyone. This is another After Hours with Richter. I am your host. My name is Richter Riolo. Richter! What? Leave him alone! Now we got Richter go, and we're going to have to hear about it all night. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bunch of screaming memes out there, and that's the scoop that has been reported so far. Well, when you don't believe in Bigfoot, everything you see that might be one is something else. Is this thing on? Am I muted? Can you hear me? Hello? My question is, why do you think Bigfoot is real? Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to After Hours with Richter, episode 13. And as with the number 13 comes technical issues. So, looks like we're bringing on our 13th issue episode just right. Tonight, we have our first female television Bigfoot star, Monica Rollins. Now, I don't know about you guys out there, but I personally loved Monster Quest. It was the show to watch before we had Finding Bigfoot. And it made Bigfoot and other monsters scary. And scary's cool. Now, granted, Finding Bigfoot wants to educate people that Bigfoot is your friend and should be learned from and, and to respect the Squatch. Whereas Monster Quest, you were scared, especially like that one episode with Dr. Meldrum up in Canada at that cabin with the rocks being thrown on the cabin and they're like miles <laughs> away from civilization. And tonight we have Monica Rollins, who was with an all-female team. They were like the original Bigfoot chicks out in Skookum. Now Skookum, thanks to Kathy Strain, means mountain devil, not Bigfoot is your friend. So we're going to talk about the show. We're going to talk about Monica's um, opinions on Bigfooting, where she's coming from, what her goal is, how she goes about doing it. And we've got loads of questions, and we're going to get right into it right this second. But first I need to tell Tammy, my co-host here, that she can control, since she's now broadcasting on her channel, what the audience sees on the main screen. So when you click on people, Tammy, they're going to see whoever's talking. You see what I'm saying? So this so is you are, a on the job training for me. Right. So you're you're like the DJ here. So like when Monica's talking, you click on her so that her face appears. And then when they say Steve is talking, you click on him. Okay. No, you click okay. On and Can our buddy, our friend click? our friend Christopher York is here with us and he's gonna watch the chat room on YouTube uh, and field us the questions in the chat room. So thank you for joining us, Chris. Anytime <laughs> <laughs> Monica, what got you interested in Bigfoot? Why Bigfoot? Why Bigfoot? Why not? Why not? Bigfoot's cool. I grew up uh, in Northern California, which, well, I call it Northern California. It probably really isn't technically Northern California. Uh, it's just north of San Francisco. But I spent all of my summers growing up in southwestern Oregon and my cousin or my uncle's property which is in kind of a little remote valley and um, my grandfather was always very much interested um, uh, I'm sorry in uh, all strange things like the Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot and anything along those lines so he really encouraged my brother and I to um, research these things and read about it he engaged us with it and he encouraged it which was really pretty cool you know looking back on it and also uh, looking back on the times that we spent out there you know there were things that happened that at the time I really didn't think much of but now that I've been in the research for as long as I have then uh, I can say you know that probably was something I mean there's several occasions over the years um, the summers in Oregon where I could think of things that happen that, you know, there probably, you know, was a Bigfoot pretty close to us. It's pretty cool. So, that being said, you've now grown up, you've gone out researching on your own, you've reached out into the Bigfoot online community. Where did you go? Where did you go first? Uh, well, I hadn't really thought about formally researching until I was already here in Texas. And I was living in East Texas. Um, and I had been online one night, and in the background we were watching The Legend of Boggy Creek on TV. And I thought, well, you know, Falk, Arkansas isn't that far from me, so I thought maybe there are people out here that are 
looking for this thing. So I got online, um, and it was still when the internet was relatively new, and I researched um, Texas Bigfoot research. And I came up with the TBRC, the BFRO, and the GCBRO. And the TBRC was the first to contact me. So I joined their group in 2002. And so now you have gone out and you've researched. You've gone looking for Bigfoot. Have you had any experiences other than what you had when you were a kid? Uh, yeah, there's there's always strange things that happen, but it, I've never had a sighting, and that's really a goal for me because I'm not somebody who's going to say I believe 100% they're there until I see it, and I haven't seen it. Okay, that brings up two questions. You said goal and um, kind of being a skeptic right there. The first question, what is your end goal uh, with research? Like, for instance, um, I asked Cliff Brackman from Finding Bigfoot last week, What's his end goal? And he says to learn as much as he can from Bigfoot. What is yours? Well, right now, it would just be proving to myself that they actually exist. Because so it's a personal It's a, it's personal, a personal thing, thing for me. I'm not out there to educate the world on it. I'm out there to find out for myself. So, and the second question, you're very skeptical. I am. So, Matt Moneymaker, if you're listening, if in the event Renee Holland comes down with bronchitis and can't show up for an episode of Finding Bigfoot, you now have Miss Monica Rollins, who has been on television, who does have a television presence, and is a skeptic. Yes, he knows. Matt knows yeah. me. I'm, try <laughs> I'm trying to pimp you out. Plug, to the producers me. of Finding Bigfoot, you have Plan B, and it's Miss Monica Rollins right here. All right, couple, we're going to get into the TV show real quick. But first, I'm going to ask you three questions really quickly. Um, are you scared of Bigfoot? And what is your best way of, how can I put this? Your best method. What is your, okay, wait. Are you scared of Bigfoot? Your, your, your most favored technique in Bigfoot research and Patterson-Gimlin film, real or not? Okay. Am I afraid of Bigfoot? I am afraid of Bigfoot like I'm afraid of any wild animal because I believe that's what they are. Um, it's something that and be like your spiritual guide. Bigfoot's your friend. Mind speak. Uh, I'm reading no, your mind. No, 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 I don't. I okay, don't good. We're all on the same page. Subscribe to that. <laughs> and, um, Not that there's anything wrong with anybody else that thinks no, like that. It's that's you know, if that's what you believe. Power to you. You know, like I told my friend, I said Bigfoot could be purple with pink polka dots and shoot flames out his ass for all I know. <laughs> 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 Nobody's proved it one way or the other. So. <laughs> right. So I'm afraid of it like I would be afraid of a bear or any other. Okay, and your, favorite, and your most favorite in your most favorite technique. My most favorite technique is call blasting. I know a lot of people don't like it. I do like it because I've had responses from it. And it's it's interesting. And there's something about being in the middle of the woods alone or maybe with a couple of other people while well, there's somebody in the distance call blasting and hearing that resonate through the forest as you're standing there. And then you hear something either mimicking it or responding to it. It's very... It's a very well, what if it's like two different researchers? What if it's, you know, Camp Rollins you know, over here? That's, at the... that's a complete possibility, and I actually think that did happen to us one year at Scudo. We were doing wood knocks, and <laughs> we were getting wood knocks in return. And the minute we switched up the cadence, it stopped. So I think that there was probably another researcher out there at the time. And Patterson-Gimlin film. Oh, I'm on the... F I know Bob Gimlin, and I don't believe he's a liar, so, I want to say it's real. I want to believe it. I do, I do, I do. I think it is. I think it's real. But, there's a but. But, I haven't seen them for myself, so I can't say, yeah, that's a big but. Like I said, they could be purple with pink polka dots and shoot flames out their fanny for all I know. So, your television appearance on Monster Quest was now seven years ago. And you were in the first season. It was episode five, and it was like... Should have been just been called the Bigfoot Chicks, for real. Because it was like, you know, this episode was an all-female team out in Washington. There was Kathy Strain. There was yourself, Monica Rollins. There was uh, Christine Walls. And there was a Tracy's, I can't say her last Nobody name. Nobody could say her last name. And um, it was just out, the four of you guys hey, Melissa, out there. Oh, how could I have forgotten Ooh, the first lady? Melissa. I forgot the first lady of Bigfooting. 
<gasps> she did I'm not sorry, call Melissa. herself that. She Damn did not call herself that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. She'll yes, be coming right. for you now. <laughs> All right, Melissa, we're going to talk about your technique setting up a trail cam watching the freeway. All right, we'll talk about that later. All right. Whose idea was it for an all-female team? You know, I am not sure. I th think it was Doug Hychek's idea. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm not 100%. I was contacted Rick Knoll and Doug Hychek were working on this project. And at the time, we didn't know what it was. We didn't know it was called Monster. We didn't know anything other than it was a possible TV show. And Rick contacted Kathy Strain and said, you know, we need some female researchers. We don't want to take them out in the middle of Skookum and, you know, near where the cast was found and, you know, do some research, get it on film. So Kathy contacted Melissa and I that way. It was basically, hey, you want to be on TV? <laughs> So, Tammy, you've got some questions regarding um, this whole female aspect. Yeah, you uh, you referred to Skookum or Skookum Meadows is where the location. Can you uh, be a little more specific about where you were uh, in respect to, like, Mount St. Helens and, and that area? Yeah, the, the Skookum Meadows itself, itself is um, just not far south from Mount St. Helens. And actually, the, the camp that the ladies were in, uh, we named Hilltop, and there's a picture of it on my Facebook page, and I think I tweeted it also. And you can see from the campsite this clear, crystal clear view of Mount St. Helens, and it's, it's pretty close. Um, and uh, it's about five, four or five hours outside of Seattle and only about, uh, I want to say two hours outside of Portland. So if you uh, if you plan on making the trek there, you might want to fly into Portland. We always flew into Seattle and took the, the long way down. But it's beautiful country, and you know you can find it on a map. If you look at Mount St. Helens, just go south and a little bit east, and you should be able to find Skookum Meadows there. And uh, how far was that from where the Skookum cast with the Bigfoot laying in the mud, uh, reaching for the apple or whatever, <clears throat> how far from where that cast was taken? Our camp was not far. It was only maybe a quarter of a mile away from where the actual cast was pulled out of the ground. So it was pretty close. I mean, we're practically on top of it. I should say possible Bigfoot laying in the mud. Because yes. there was also comparisons to an elk and elk. other things. Okay, yeah. so, all right. So, girl to girl. Your hair looks awesome. I love the way you've got the bangs and the swept over to the side, and your makeup's Thank perfect. You. You're gorgeous. So you're sweet. <laughs> so um, girl to girl, um, you guys were like making fruit salad and chopping up <laughs> apples and stuff. And can you give us some uh, recipe tips on how to attract a Bigfoot? You know, the apple thing was. Not, I don't know that it was anybody's idea specifically. I think it was part of the shot list that we were handed. It was a high check creation, if I remember correctly. It was a long time ago. But, um, you know, it looks good on TV, so we chopped up some apples and left them on a tree stump for the elk and deer to enjoy. <laughs> and we've got lots of pictures of uh, elk and deer enjoying apples. I want to ask you a question about Kathy Strain. Was she, like, the team leader? Because she seemed like she was, like, the smart one. There was no leader. You know, when they when you film something, the editing room has so much control over how you look and mm -hmm. what they want you to be in the end, but there was no leader. She's uh, written a book called Giants, Cannibals, and Monsters, uh, Bigfoot mm -hmm. and Native Culture. Did you read it? You know, I think I did when it first came out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's going to get thinking... mad at me because I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about buying it actually. She's kind of like my own personal Obi Wan Kenobi, so I She's don't think awesome. I can go you wrong. Buy it. Any book so. that Kathy gives is full of information, and she—you're right. She is a smart woman, and she knows her stuff. Um, I love her dearly. And we'll put a little ad here. Buy the book. Thirty-five dollars. Amazon.com. Yeah. That's right. Go buy Kathy's <laughs> book. It's full of information that you need to know. Absolutely, especially all that Indian information. So let's talk about the one um, Bigfoot chick I totally forgot about, and I am so sorry, Melissa Hubbard. <laughs> <laughs> it was not intentional. Um, she's part of the American Bigfoot Society? 
She's the president, I believe. Right. Oh, she's the president. Oh, yes. then why is she? Okay. Oh, Madam President, then. Um, she, in the television show, was hook, hook, putting up the trail cam, and you guys got some amazing photos of, like, a Hyundai and a Toyota and a it was SUV. <laughs> <laughs> and one guy, I don't know. You have to understand that um, there was very limited angles to put this because the the road, of course, is right there. This mud pit where the Skookum cast was pulled out of is literally right there off the road. And it's a very large area. So you're you're kind of limited in where you can place the camera. You know, without somebody who's driving into the gravel pit roll or into the, the mud pit just running over the camera you have set up. Because Rick had put it in um, like a fake rock he had created. It looked like a boulder sitting there. The camera okay. Was it. And uh, I was not there when the camera was placed. If I remember correctly, I was shivering my ass off in the back of a truck <laughs> trying to get warm. And... Uh, I think that the I think the camera may have been moved, or we would have had a lot more images of trucks. Because if you remember in Finding Bigfoot this past season, there was a trail cam put over a bloody, gory mess of like pig and cow intestines, and something came and took all the animal remains away. But there was no SD card in the trail cam. <laughs> okay, and we're not going to say who was responsible for that because I'll get in trouble. <laughs> but it seems like there's not. It's very hard to get something like a Sasquatch on the trail cam. Granted, there's like that that Jacobs picture, and there's um, and the uh, you can't see it, but I've got the Cliff Barackman uh, road trip DVD up there, which mm -hmm. I have to watch next. And cool. there's the Clackamas photo that he has on his DVD, mm -hmm. um, which you guys should buy and check out. It's pretty cool. So there's probably like maybe two or three really halfway kind of decent trail cam photos and. How many trail cams are out there? You know, there's got to be tons of them, especially with deer cams. Yeah. But you look at look at the acreage that you're trying to cover. You don't know where these things are, right? You put it on one tree, and you hope that it walks in front of that tree. I mean, look at how much land you're trying to cover with how many game cameras. I mean, it's... So, it's, it's, so if we put a trail day. cam on every other tree in the Pacific Northwest, I don't think we would ever get another photo. Because they'd, be like they'd be doing a hop squatch between trees. Well, a lot of people think that they take to the trees, too. So they're, they're moving. You know, I'm glad you brought that up. I always wondered, how come no one ever looks up into those trees? Look up you might in the see, trees. Because right, I you might see reports. a whole freaking Ewok village up there, you know? Right. <laughs> 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 you know? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of reports of them swinging through the trees. So I think that, that researchers need to look up a lot more than that. Let's bring in my other co-host, um, the lovely, handsome, recently made grandfather, Steve Elkhorn. Oh, congratulations. He says one minute. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, Richter? Yes, ma'am. I can fill in with another question about trail cams. Please do. Okay, so Monica, we we were talking about how hard it is to uh, figure out where to place trail cams to, you know, capture Sasquatch on them. So, what do you think is the best process for narrowing down the the specific placement of trail cams to increase your chances? You know, I don't believe in placing a lot of trail cams out because I don't believe that in any image you take is ever going to be good enough. Somebody's going to say it's a guy in a suit or it's a bear or it's whatever. They'll find something. I don't think a photograph is going to prove anything. So I don't put a lot of faith in trail cams. So that, that's okay. a bad question for me because I don't, I don't do a lot with trail cams personally. So your favorite technique is call blasting. It is for me. And it's because bad. it's personal for me. I'm not out there trying to, you know, like, shove it in everybody's face. You know, I'm not trying yeah. to prove to the world. First and foremost, I need to prove it to myself. And then I will be interested in proving it to the world. So, so we're, we're doing things in steps then. We just need you to have your own personal experience with these things. Then go from there. That would be good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's talk yeah. about um, finding Bigfoot. You know some of the stars. I do. Bobo, Cliff, Matt. 
Have you met Renee? I have. I met Renee very briefly in Oklahoma. Ah. She probably doesn't remember me because I think she was trying to get somewhere real fast, and she, you know, said hi as she was walking by me. And you've known these, and you know Barcutino. Haven't you gone researching with Barcutino? I have. Have I? Yes, I have. Yes, in Northern California, we were out together. So, so tell me all about Bart. <laughs> He's so much better looking in person than he is on the. You're just gonna faint, faint when you see him because he's such a pretty boy. <laughs> he's sweet. I love him. He's a good guy. He is. He's a good guy. Speaking of thermals, we have a question from uh, another handsome redhead, Todd Hale. You want to know if you've seen uh, Bart's thermal footage from the Sierra kill site? Mm -hmm. I don't believe I have. There were a clip for me to review. I've seen so many. He showed there's, me some footage, but I don't know. There's like some swaying involved, and I think they throw poop at one point, and, and they kind of get. I think at one point they give Bart the finger. Yeah. You have to watch from behind the trees, or all. Yeah. <laughs> Here's this tree. And they're like, Ugh! Yeah. We'll have to send you the link to watch Phil Poling's para breakdown. He did a really good job breaking it down. Okay. I All right, Steve Elkhorn is back, and does he have audio? I think I do. Yes. Am I muted? Okay, Hello? Monica. <laughs> <laughs> Monica, you had uh, TV cameras and film crew and everything following you around. How did that uh, affect research when you were up at the, the Skookum site? The Skookum, the Skookum experience was a lot different than other film experiences I've had because I've also filmed with the Travel Channel for their re weird uh, travel series. And I had first filmed with the Travel Channel, and when they were out with us, the TBRC, um, we had a full film crew. We had a sound girl, two camera guys, a field producer, and somebody else. So there was a full crew walking around with us, and they actually weren't that bad. They just followed us. They didn't give us direction. They're like, do what you do, and we're held to film you. And that's really the way I think that it should be. With Monster Quest, I assumed it would be the same thing until <laughs> the camera guy shows up and he goes, oh, here's my shot list. And it's, you know, two pages long. And I was like, oh, it's one of their shows. <laughs> so, and what okay, a shot so list is. What is, what is a shot list? Like, we want you to fight, slap Melissa. We want you to, you know, pull hair. What's a shot list? A shot list is... A, list of scenes or images um, or little mini storylines that the producer wants. You know, this is what Doug Hycheck wants you to get on film. He wants to see you with a uh, night vision looking out over a range. He wants to see the girls trudging through Skooka Meadows and casting an elk plant, an elk knee. So that's what a shot list is. It's a list of required shots for the project. And there wasn't a whole lot of serious research going on because number one it was like a torrential rain almost the entire time we were there which it's very difficult mm -hmm. to research in. Uh, it was freezing and we had the shot list to worry about on a daily basis and our cameraman had to tuck himself into Betty by by 9 p.m. every evening. So, oh yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> you can imagine there, it, there wasn't a lot of, you know, actual research on film. And this, this is what the Weather Channel one, or is this was the, um, the Travel Channel, or the uh, Monster, Monster Quest? Monster Which one Quest. Was it? Monster, Quest. Monster Quest. Oh. So I was more impressed with the way the Travel Channel filmed than I was the way Monster Quest did. And I so think that it was a fluke with us, though. We've got to find this um, Travel Channel te television show. It's got to be out there somewhere. They replay it every now and then. I see it on there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh. Keith Ross has a question. He wants to know if you will do a call blast for us. All right. Go for it. I got that. Okay. No. Do, it. do your call <laughs> no. blast. Come no. on. No. I call. am not Bobo. <laughs> <laughs> My call blasts are Me and Steve are ready. Do it. Come on. Do it. No, I'd have to go stand in the other room. I'd probably blow out my own. You'd mind. probably scare your child. I probably would. There is a window yeah. in my house here somewhere. Your child's first memory. I remember my mother screaming. 
she did this weird scream like kind of thing. I can't do okay. it nearly as well as um, obviously Cliff and Bobo and Matt. So it's been a few years since Monster Quest. So what have you done since then? What have you gone and you, I know you're on the Sharon Lee Bigfoot Field Reporter blog radio yeah, show. Well, since then, I mean, I did a lot. I was on Beyond the Edge for a while with Sean. Melissa and I had our own podcast for a long time, The Gray Area. Oh, that's what it was called, The Gray Area. Yeah. And, um, and recently, I've been working with Sharon on her on her podcast, where really I just kind of sit there for moral support. You know, apparently there was a vacancy last year, and you jumped to her rescue, so thank you. <laughs> I'm here to help. <laughs> I'm here to help. <laughs> Tammy, you have another one? Yes. Tammy, um, Tammy, oh, by the way, guys, everybody that's listening and watching, Tammy took notes for this show. I've been on her for every webcast. Take notes. Not notes. a lot, but there are notes here. I studied. Good. <laughs> so how do you practice your Bigfoot calls, Monica? <laughs> I don't practice. <laughs> it's all off the cuff. That's, that's something you learn from doing repeatedly in the field. I mean, unless you live on acres and acres of land or you have extremely understanding neighbors. I can't imagine that it's something that you would just practice around the house. <laughs> Uh, we do. The woods. Oh, do you? Yeah. Do you well, my, yeah. My husband plays the bagpipes, so you know it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> They're just a break from the bagpipes. Yeah. Now they're, say, now they're screaming and howling. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna say I've never done a Bigfoot call since I've never gone squatching. So hopefully the day will come when I will have that opportunity. So maybe I should start practicing it. I guess. Come so out with you're me this virgin. summer. Okay. Come to school cool. with me. All right. I'll take right you. Right on. Fly I, I, won't be, I, I, I won't be. I won't be talked in bed at nine in the morning or at nine at night. Excuse me. Yeah. I'll be up there all night long. Doesn't work. Well. <laughs> yeah, you need to be. And it's uh, it's a pretty isolated place. I mean, the actual campground where we camp in Skookum is a good hour by, you know, windy, treacherous road to the nearest town. So you're. You're out there. You're in the middle of nowhere. So how far are you from the nearest town? It's Skookum. Yeah. An hour. An hour. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, so don't break your leg. Because <laughs> it'll <laughs> suck on the right end. Oh, really? Yeah. That's so, pretty damn far. Yeah, you've got to be willing to go out and rough it. You have to dig your own toilet. And bring <laughs> all your water in. What's this thing called Bigfoot Adventure Weekends that Sharon has talked about? What is that? That is something that Sharon and I put together to try to get people out there researching um, to where they're, they're learning how to go out there. And I hate to say the right way, but you're not at least going out into the woods and just fumbling around trying to imitate what you've seen on TV. You know, we go out and we teach you how to cast uh, how to track, how to bait, that's Sharon's thing, and, um, and how to find a good research area by looking at, you know, different reports, how to set up a night investigation without breaking your leg in the process. So it's just like a little Ohio. training course. Yes, it is. It's a salt fork in June. So are you thinking about maybe branching out and doing it at other locations? Yeah, you know, we did originally have Skookum Meadows out there, but that's so costly because neither one of us lives anywhere near there. Um, and it would cost a lot because we, we provide you breakfast, lunch, dinner uh, in, in order to... Huh? I was going to say happy endings. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you can provide your own. <laughs> What you do in your tent, I don't care. See, I'm glad I brought that up because isn't there like two different kinds of Bigfoot, Bigfoot Adventure Weekends, one for adults and one for kids? There, <laughs> the Skookum one was supposed to be for adults, and that's only because I have a very low tolerance for kids in the field. Oh. Uh, yeah. It's not, you know, like there's anything 
funky going on after the sun goes down. <laughs> it's nothing like, you know, ooh, adults, wink, wink, wink. <laughs> well, that's what I thought, you know. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> because I wouldn't be going to the kitty one. I want to go to the adult one, you know. Going to the Where the boys at? the middle of the woods, right? No. It's nothing <laughs> like that. <laughs> no, no, no. It was a kid-friendly weekend in Ohio because there were a lot of people contacting us because their kids see Finding Bigfoot on TV. And the kids want to get out and learn how to do this stuff and feel like they're involved in it. And it also gives us the opportunity to teach, like, the next generation of researchers, you know, how to get out there and, and conduct themselves. Chris, how's the chat room? Is there anything more of it in the chat room right now? Nothing right now. Yeah? So, Tammy, what you got? Okay, I've got one more serious question, Monica. <laughs> um, recording equipment. Uh, have you ever um, gotten any uh, vocalizations recorded? We have gotten vocalizations recorded. Um, <clears throat> actually, the best one that I can recall right now uh, happened while we were with the Travel Channel, surprisingly. We were in East Texas, and we were just call blasting. We were doing our thing. We were call blasting the Ohio Howl. And uh, we heard in the distance almost the exact thing coming back at us. And we actually thought that it was the sound girl playing back what had just been broadcast. And that poor girl, she was kind of sitting off by herself, you know, in the bushes. And we hear this, and we, you know, three of us, four of us come running at her in the middle of the night, and go, what was that, what was that? And, you know, if you've ever seen somebody uh, who's a sound technician, they have big earphones on, and they've got a big mixing board in front of them. And we scared the crap out of that poor girl, because, you know, she sits there in the dark and all of a sudden there's four people they're just like what, 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 just screaming at her and they could not with the particular equipment she had she goes I can only record I can't play back she goes that was not me she says I can't oh. rewind I can't do anything with this thing that I have here in the field she goes all I can do is take in sound so that was interesting and it happened I want to say two more times that evening where we would call and we'd get <sighs> a mimic sound back maybe 10 seconds later. That was pretty cool. Did they use it on the episode? They did, but it was really faint. I don't know that it came over very well. Mm, because okay. you hear it, you know, it's different. You're standing there, you hear it coming at you, and very rarely do you get it recorded <laughs> to the clarity that you hear it yeah. while you're standing there. Okay. One of our friends, I'm sorry, Tammy, go ahead. Well, I was just curious, um, do you have any, from the Monster Quest, do you have any memorable moments that you can share with us, or maybe some outtakes? <laughs> loaded question there, Tammy. That is a loaded question. Yeah. I could like, talk all night Bam. about, <laughs> I could talk all night about all kinds of, of outtakes. We want dirt, girl. We want dirt. I got dirt. I got dirt. I got dirt. <laughs> It was a long time ago, so nobody should be pissed that I I spill in the beans, right? So they won't hear. They won't hear. They're not listening. So it was it was a very interesting trip in that, you know, we Melissa and I fly from Dallas into Seattle where we're supposed to meet Rick Knoll, right? And we're supposed to meet him at I think 10 a.m. at some mall near the airport. So we fly in, we get there. Neither one of us are good flyers, by the way, so it's like a nerve-wracking four-and-a-half-hour flight into Seattle. And we rent the car, we get there. No Rick. He's not answering his phone either. So noon rolls around, and we finally get Rick on the phone. And he's like, oh, I'm having issues with my camper, because he had a large dually, I believe, with a gigantic camper on, shell on the back of it, and that's what he used to, to camp out of. And... Long story short with that, he shows up at 6 p.m., and we've been sitting in this mall the entire time for like eight, nine hours, and we sit down, and I am introduced to, Kathy was there with us, I already knew her, I was introduced to Christine Walls and Tracy, and we proceed, after sitting there for nine hours, the five-hour, four-hour trip down into Skooka Meadows, we get there at like 1 in the morning, everybody's falling asleep, Rick's scaring us, because he's like, no, stay on the road, because there's sheer cliffs on either side, and you've got to be careful, and I was like, I do! <laughs> right? 
And I'm right behind Rick, and as we're going, because the road's very winding, and, and it's mountainous. So as we're going through all these curves, Rick's camper is doing this. So I'm driving down the road being lulled to sleep by the back of Rick's camper. <laughs> so that was, that was interesting, uh, that we made it there alive. And there was, um, there was a lot of conflict throughout, throughout the entire production. Well, not a lot of people well, got along. Well, you're just a bunch of girls, and you know how girls are. I know. Yeah. You know, it probably wouldn't have been so bad if a certain person wasn't just constantly picking fights with me. So... And no, that better. was not Melissa Hovey. No, it was not Melissa or Kathy or Tracy. <laughs> so would you say that, that you guys got a little bitchy on this trip? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, tempers were probably, you know, running high anyway because it was just miserable. The weather, I mean, and it's not anybody's fault for that. The weather was just terrible the entire time we were there. We were there for a full week filming this you know, episode that maybe were for like maybe 20 minutes. So they took seven days worth of film and edited it down to 20 minutes worth of, you know, screen time. So there's a lot of juicy stuff on some B-roll somewhere on the cutting room floor because that, you know, once the guy rolled out of bed in the morning and he drove that hour into town, took a shower, went to the bathroom, ate breakfast, decided to come back to camp, you know, from then on, we were filming. So, <laughs> so, you know, it takes a while to get used to a camera in your face, plus you've got bad weather. And I had a very unfortunate tent that did not want to stay dry, so everything I owned was damp. And, yeah, I mean, it was, it was fun. It was fun looking back on it. It was definitely, you know, it's an adventure, and that's what you want in your life, right? A little adventure, and that's what it was. Yeah, of course. Just a little uncomfortable. You would definitely... You would definitely do it again. I would. I would do it again. In fact, I'd go spend a week in Skookum in almost any weather. Maybe not a blizzard because they get a lot of snow up there. But there's some pretty cool places up there. It's beautiful. Do you recall the name of your um, show that was on the Travel Channel? Weird Travels what? What was it? Because there's a bunch of it was, weird travels on YouTube. Yeah, it's Weird Travels Travel Channel. I think the episode was Bigfoot Swamp Creatures or something like that. Okay, because there's Weird Travels Bigfoot, I'm finding. Um, it's probably Weird the Travels Bigfoot Hunt, one. The Jersey Devil. It's the Bigfoot one. Huh. It's there. Fine. Why do you sound like a Smurf? <laughs> I yeah. am not a Smurf, girl. Sugar. What are you saying? You are saying being mean. sucking helium balloons. This is why doing? people are scared of you. <laughs> You make fun of them. I'm not making fun. Like, I'm asking a question. <laughs> there is absolutely nothing wrong with my voice. Not now. You bitch. <laughs> I am. I am. I have a little uh, sound. Bitch. Well, yeah. I try. I do what I can. <laughs> I was wondering what someone was going to talk about my voice. <laughs> Please tell me my voice hasn't been like that the entire interview. No, just the last 10, 15 minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were doing right. it on purpose. No. Making a statement. <laughs> no. Yeah, actually I was. <laughs> You'll find out I when just you pull it silly. off my channel. <laughs> well then, I think we've covered about pretty much everything. Um, from Monster Quest to the Travel Channel's um, weird, Travel Channel, weird, weird Travel Show that we're going to have to find about. Yeah, and, that's um, a tough one to find. Yeah, it's out there. Um, our friend Jeff Kelly, who's pretty good at investigating, uh, and Steve Alcorn, and maybe even Henry May might even be able to help. We could track this down. Yeah. yeah. What's, the, what's the name of that show? Weird Travels. Weird Travels, all right. That was the name of the series. And then the episode, I want to say, is Bigfoot. Well, there's one. There was an episode on YouTube here called Bigfoot, but I skimmed through it really quickly, and when you were talking about your drama with the other Bigfoot chicks, um, I didn't see anything. <laughs> it's, uh, I didn't see you. it's like the last 20 minutes is the TBRC. Monica, and, I have one real quick question, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, how do people uh, find out about the uh, Bigfoot Adventure Weekends with you and Sharon? You can go to BigfootAdventureWeekends.com 
And we also have a Facebook page, Bigfoot Adventure Weekends. All the info's on there. How much is it? <gasps> I believe it's $100 for the weekend. Ooh. And it includes all of your food and the camping fees. Bring your own wine? Bring your own wine, bring your own snacks. But we provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's very and happy reasonable. endings. <laughs> no happy endings unless, you know, you really feel generous. Then <laughs> you can do whatever you want. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Well, that wraps it up pretty much. Uh, thank you very much, Monica, Monica, for taking the time to join us on this um, interesting uh, day, the 13th episode of After Hours, which definitely went... Um, like the number 13 what? should. Yeah, started off rocky, thanks to Google+. Plus, and thank you, Tammy Murray, for saving us. And uh, Tammy, show off your Bigfoot necklace. Sweet, sassy, glassy. Dot com! Oh, he remembered. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Christopher York, for fielding the questions from the chat room, and Steve Alcorn for joining us once again as our investigative reporter. And my name is Richter Riello, and thank you, Monica Rollins. Thank you, honey. And Thank so you, everybody. Now, Tammy. Thanks, Monica. Thanks, Tammy.